Support for this program is provided in part by Guido's Fresh Marketplace. I'm Anna Gershenson. It is the middle of winter. It is cold outside. It's not very welcoming, but we are here in a warm kitchen with bright colors, making food that is going to make us feel strong, that will prepare our bodies to fight all these flus and colds and everything that's out there. So as you can see, we have lots of green and it's broccoli. So today we will make two dishes with broccoli. One will be roasted broccoli with a little bit um, different finish that you might not have tried before, as well as soup with broccoli that is going to really warm you through and it's going to be bright green and delicious, I promise. So we are going to start with um, sautéing our um, onion and garlic. So I'm going to turn on my, my little stove here to, to start um, the fire. And we are going to use a large onion that we will be chopping and then adding to our uh, olive oil and with some garlic so because this soup is made with water and not with stock so i want to make sure that there is good amount of flavoring and the onion and garlic are going to do this for us in addition to that there is one secret ingredient that i like to use in soups that you probably can never taste one when you eat it but it really does great job with flavoring and this is fennel seeds Fennel seeds are really very, very good for you, for your digestion. You can chew on them to get rid of, you know, if you, if you feel that your breath doesn't smell so great, you can, you can do that. And um, what I do is uh, you can either use a spice grinder or you can use um, this little mortar and pestle that I brought with me. And you just put your seeds there and you crush them until they look like, you know, powder. You don't want to, um, to chew, like to, to bite into them, so you won't even know that they are there. Okay, so let's put a couple of tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil into my pot. Um, now it's nice and warm. And um, add the onions. Okay, I don't hear any sound, so I'm increasing the heat. All your senses are here, smell, taste, your eyes are looking, what's happening. So now I, I can hear some action. So the other, the other part, and then um, garlic will go there as well. Garlic and onion are uh, friends in the alien family. They, they are wonderful for flavoring all kinds of foods, especially soups. And soup is really one of my favorite foods, um, especially in the winter when you want to, you know, when you want to warm your body. And um, it's just incredible how, how comforting it is to have soup when it's cold outside. Okay, so it's sizzling nicely and once the onion is in, I always like adding um, a dash of salt so that it will help start releasing um, the water 
and also flavoring the onion and contributing to the flavor of the soup. Okay, so it's cooking. Now the garlic. So the onion was pretty large, as you saw. I have two large cloves of garlic. And actually, the soup um, is something that I was inspired to make when I was visiting my niece in Colorado, and she had different ingredients in her refrigerator, and I just threw it together and it turned out so delicious that I decided to write down this recipe so that I can repeat it. And so now that I'm going to go and visiting her again, I know that there are folks there who are looking forward to eating the soup again. So this is a good practice for me to make sure that I remember how to, how to make it. Okay. So with the garlic, I'm not going to be chopping it. I will just smash it so that when it is cooking, it can release all its flavors and at the same time will be um, cooking nicely. The soup is going to be pureed, so you don't have to worry about um, you know, having bigger pieces there because it's all going to go into the blender. All right, so um, there is one thing that I'm going to use for thickener, and that is a potato. I, I got a good sized russet potato, and it is really, um, it's about like half a pound. So you will peel it, and then you, took, you cut it into cubes, and once you are onions and garlic are softened. Uh, before you add the potato, you will add your crushed uh, or powdered fennel seeds. And that will, that will, you know, be a start of your soup. Okay, it's cooking nicely. Let me add some fennel. So it's a teaspoon of fennel that I put into my little mortar and pestle and just crushed around like that. So I'm adding it now, and we can already start smelling these aromas. Fennel, as soon as you crush it, it, is, um, it's, it has a really, really potent smell. And um, you get kind of aromatherapy together with, um, with your nutrients. All right, so this potato is not a very pretty one. You never, you never know when you buy something until you start peeling it, what's under, underneath. So definitely you don't want to have these black, black parts there, so you'll have to cut them off and we'll end up having a little less potato than I was hoping to get, but we'll live. Okay, so we'll cut it in about um, you know, half inch cubes, and we will throw it in once the onion and uh, garlic have softened because you want them to be really, really sweet to add that sweetness to your soup. Okay. All right. And I already have hot water ready waiting for me. I don't like adding cold water to my um, vegetables that are all hot and ready to go to kind of slow down uh, the cooking process. So um, at home I have electric kettle, so I would boil water in it. And here I prepared it in a, in a pot in the back. All right, so as you see, um, the onions and garlic are be becoming translucent. And that's a sign that they are softening. And at this point, I can add my potatoes. OK. And I'll add a little more salt to that. And actually, when I add water, I already will season my water so that, so that all of that um, salt starts permeating into vegetables. And uh, and flavoring them. So I will add about six cups of water. I heat it a little more, just in case I might need 
uh, more liquid there, but we'll start with six cups. Okay. All right. So we are pouring our hot water and increasing the heat to make sure that our soups, soup doesn't stop cooking, but picks up the pace. Okay. So now, now that um, our water is in, and we'll bring it to boil, and then reduce it to simmer, and cover it, and watch for potatoes to start getting soft. So once the potatoes are soft, then the broccoli will go in, and from then on, it will be very fast until your soup is ready. So in order to prepare broccoli for this, we are going to use both the stems um, and, and, um, and the florets. So you will cut off the stem. And what I do, I peel the stem. It's very easy. It comes off really, really easily. And then I'll cut it into smaller pieces, and it will go in together with, with the florets. OK, so we have about a pound of broccoli for this. So half a pound of potato, one large onion, a couple of large garlic cloves, and about a pound of broccoli. So broccoli here will be divided into, um, into these big size florets. So when I'm going to be putting them into, into the soup, I will be standing them up so that um, the stems are cooking, but the, the crowns are kind of steaming. I don't want them to be overcooked. So here I also, I cut the stem. I put like a slit through the stem, and that helps it cook much faster. Just not to separate it, but just to release that, that space so that so that it can, uh, the water will penetrate easily there, and it will soften much faster. All right, good. Our soup is simmering nicely. OK, what I'm going to do is taste, because I want to make sure that there is enough salt in it. I can add some more salt. You really want to make, don't be afraid to add salt because that will make everything very flavorful and is not going to really give you that much sodium. OK. It seasoned really well, and that's the way I want it. So now I'm reducing the heat again so that it would simmer. So while it's simmering and our broccoli is ready, we are going to put it here. We are going to now go on to the next uh, dish, which is roasted broccoli. And this um, lovely recipe, um, I actually saw this lovely recipe in Food and Wine magazine. And um, the way that, that it's finished there is kind of um, Vietnamese French um, influence. After you roast your broccoli and red onion, you, you brown the butter, and then you add a little bit of fish oil, I mean a little bit of fish sauce, and, uh, and capers. And so that um, lovely um, sauce is going to go on top of the broccoli. So this is so, so easy. Uh, all you need to do is just get your broccoli florets, throw it into a preheated 500 degree oven, and then, um, together with the uh, edge wedges of, of the onion, of course, we are going to season them, and we are going to um, dress them with a little bit of olive oil. And once they are done, you just you know dress your dish. So uh, it's, it's a very, very lovely way to eat, to eat broccoli. It gets charred a little bit, and 
um, roasted vegetables are really delicious. Their flavors are concentrated, so it's really great. So let us um, cut off the stems and separate into smaller pieces here. And then, like, okay, cut off more of the stem. We actually could throw the stem into the soup, not to waste anything. Okay, so I washed my, my broccoli, and I also kind of shook off the extra water because you don't want to have too much water there, and also took towel and patted it dry. Okay, so this is about the size I want, not too big, not too small. All right, let's see how our soup is cooking. Adding, okay, it's much easier for me to do it at home because I'm, I'm, very, I'm very aware of um, the amount of gas that once I put it on that it's, it's not changing and this is something that you have to get adjusted to. All right, so let's cut them again. All right, let's grab our baking sheet. You want to make sure that pieces are more or less even in size so that they cook evenly. So it looks like they are. My baking sheet is here. I will throw them on and then add the red onion. Okay. Okay. All right. So, standing it this way and having the end still attached, don't cut it off so that these layers can be held together about half an inch and going around and cutting it. And we have nice wedges here that will be delicious and caramelized once they're roasted. Okay, and this is going too fast. Okay, all right. So as you see, we are incorporating really, really nutritious vegetable that everybody is advising you eat a lot of. And, um, Broccoli has um, sulforaphane, which is great for um, fighting the, the cancer cells, stop to stop them from proliferating. And there is plenty of it in all cruciferous vegetables, and of course in broccoli. Uh, broccoli actually um, was cultivated six, uh, in 6th century BC in, in the uh, northern Mediterranean. And it was a favorite food of um, Italians. And it came to us from southern Italy and didn't become popular in this country um, until 1920s. And it's, it's actually the immigrants the immigrants from Italy who brought it to us. So we can be very grateful to them <laughs> for bringing such a wonderful, nutritious food that now we love eating. Okay. So once you dress it all, you put it in the oven and, and it will roast nicely. Okay. Make sure that it's all spread out well. Okay. There we go. Now let's check on our potatoes, which should be pretty soft by now. Yes, they are pretty soft. And now I'll show you how um, I put broccoli into, into this. Um, 
So I stand, I stand it up so that the, the um, florets are facing, the green stuff is facing up and just the stems are submerged. And this way, it will be kind of steaming, like I told you. And actually, this sulforaphane that is so valuable, um, it disappears. The longer you cook the broccoli, the more of it disappears. So if you want to keep it intact, you really um, don't want to cook it for too long. And broccoli doesn't take long to cook. So after cooking it for about 10 minutes, probably, 20% of sulforaphane will be gone, and then the longer you cook it, the more of it will disappear. All right, so now that we put all our ingredients there, we make sure that everything is cooking nicely, and we will close it, close the lid, and we'll allow it to, to to soften, to be still bright but soft. So we will be back very soon and we'll show you what we do with it after um, our broccoli is soft. Three, two, one. Okay, my broccoli and onions are roasting in the oven. They are almost ready to come out and I am on to making the sauce that will go on top of it. I put four tablespoons of unsalted butter on the skillet, melted the butter, and kept it over medium heat to make sure that the butter browns so it can really taste nutty and, and toasty. And so at this point, I'm going to put this into um, a little bowl and add to it um, a tablespoon of capers that I gave a rough chop so that there are more of them that will be distributed over the broccoli. The more you can taste that salty, delicious stuff, the, the, the better it's going to be. And a teaspoon of fish sauce. And then I mix it together. And as soon as um, the broccoli is ready to come out, we are going to spoon it over it. In the meantime, um, I already placed cooked um, vegetables into the blender and and um, this is what we are going to do um, we are going to have actually more delicious healthy stuff that we don't have to cook you will use an, a, a, about a couple of um, cups of uh, raw spinach baby spinach so since I divided in in half my soup that I'm going to process separately so I'm going to put the spinach half of the spinach and half of uh, basil leaves. And then I will process it. And then we'll combine it into a little, into our pot and we'll be able to uh, season. And I'll tell you how I go about seasoning it. So let's turn it on. As you can see, the soup is lush and creamy without having any cream in it. So we are going to pour it into this pot, set aside, put the second one on, and do the same thing. Add our spinach, okay, and our fresh basil, and it smells so good. It almost smells like summer here. Okay. Okay. Everything is creamy, lovely. It goes in, and now the flavoring magic happens. First of all, we have to make sure that we have enough salt there. So I'm tasting it. 
and it needs a little bit more salt. It really tastes very sweet and lovely at this point. I will grind some fre fresh, uh, freshly ground bla black pepper is going in. Then I will take nutmeg and grate some nutmeg. And the best thing to keep nutmeg in your um, cupboard for a long time is not to buy it powdered, but grate as, many, as much as you need at a time. Then I will grate lemon zest. Okay. And you know, um, acid really brings out all the flavors. So when you are adding lemon juice, which is going to be next, it is going to really bind everything together. And I'm holding my hand. You can have a little strainer. Make sure that, that you do not have any any seeds there and now you mix it and taste it okay all right and we'll see if we need to adjust our seasonings let's see mm. it does need a little bit of salt because salt allows everything to come through a little bit of everything, actually. Okay. All right. Okay. And nutmeg. Let's taste it again. Mm, I can smell the nutmeg. It's so aromatic. We're probably something that is not getting used too much. Mm -hmm. Nice. A little bit more lemon. Okay. All right. Okay, guys. So the soup will go into the bowl. And you'll see how beautiful it is. Okay, and we can put a little bit of basil on top. You can add a little sour cream if you like it, or, or, or add a little Parmesan cheese, whatever strikes your fancy. Now, our lovely broccoli and onions are ready. So what we are going to do is put them onto our sheet, onto our serving plate, and spoon our lovely sauce over it. And voila, you have these two lovely dishes that are going to nourish you and are going to tintillate your senses. Enjoy. Support for this program is provided in part by Widow's Fresh Marketplace.